tapes because it was found in KGB archives as a result of the interrogations of spiritual groups. Uh, so the spiritual groups no longer exist. Also, ich übersetze. Den letzten Teil habe ich jetzt nicht verstanden. Okay, also ähm, wird es anfangen, ähm, mit einer, Leg einer Legende zu erzählen. Und die yeah. Legende geht zurück auf den Templerorden. Und diese Geschichte ist gefunden worden in den. Man also dieses Manuskript ist gefunden worden in den KGB-Archiven als Ergebnis von. Ähm, ja, Untersuchungen oder Investigationen für ähm, spirituelle Gruppen. Also, das war ja nicht sehr. Mm. Ah, okay. Mm. okay. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, so there was uh, a, a man who was yeah, quite well known in spiritual circles and he was arrested by the KGB. And I'm not sure if it was his son or his grandson who was then interested in like what was my father actually involved in. And after the, uh, yeah, the collapse of the Soviet Union, he went looking for these things and he found these uh, stories in the archives and usually of every legend there's actually many different versions because it was an oral tradition so little differences <laughs> mm -hmm. snuck up in them so there's like 10, 20 versions of every legend. Um, and uh, this specific legend also illustrates a little bit about the, the nature of the cosmos, which I will tell about more in detail later. So, uh, the story starts with heaven as being like this intact, nice place where there is uh, just order and harmony as designed by uh, the absolute creator of all and everything. And uh, within this uh, great cosmos there are many layers, many different types of beings, many different types of spirits or angels. Um, they were not called angels back then, because angels is literally messengers, so, but well, no messages were needed, because everything was just in harmony and contact with each other. But also within the heavens there were differences and there were divisions. And one of the divisions was um, between yeah, relatively the lower parts of the heavens and the higher parts of the heavens. And it was a barrier which was called uh, the barrier of the occult silence. And can, 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 you, can, you, can you repeat it? the it barrier of the occult? Yeah, the seal of the occult silence. Silence. Um also es gibt ein, im, in dem perfekten Himmel gibt es halt eine Trennung zwischen oberen und unteren Himmel und dass diese Trennung nennt sich die Barriere des ähm, okkulten ähm, der okkulten Stille. Und occult literally means hidden, so the hidden silence. So it seemed that everything was one and flowing, but there were some things which could not be seen, could not be heard, could not be realized on these lower levels. So there was somehow a lack of something which was existing in the higher heaven. And well, but still everybody was like, yeah, blissfully unaware. They did not know what they were missing, so they were quite okay with it. Um, but there was one of the, of the greater angels, an archangel, um, called Lucifer, and um, he noticed that there was really this difference between the higher orders of angels and the lower orders of angels. And he said, like, hmm, there is a difference, and I am different from them. And he started to think about this difference, and he thought, like, okay, why are certain beings in the higher heavens, why are certain beings in the lower heavens, and what is the essence of this? Why? what makes us different. And he found out that it was um, this occult silence was in a way blocking some of the higher impulses from reaching into the lower heavens. And he started to theorize about this. He said, well, maybe if this occult silence would not exist, then the beings from these lower heavens could go into the higher heavens where things are better, they're nicer, they're more light. Um, so I think this would be a nice thing if this uh, yeah, seal could be broken and then um, yeah, everything.
everything could come closer to the Creator, everything could come closer to the Absolute. So, he had this wonderful plan to improve heaven, and he went up to Michael. And he said, Michael, brother, I have a great idea. <laughs> <laughs> Why don't we get rid of this uh, yeah, occult silence and then uh, me and all the brothers we can ascend into the into the higher heavens because like even the lowest of us will become higher than we are now and we will become even higher than we are now and we will have our position but it will just be on a higher level, on a higher plane. So this is better for everybody. Uh, but to his amazement Michael disagreed. And Michael said, no, there's, this is the order, this is how it is, this is how it should be, and it is yeah, not to be changed. So, of course, Lucifer was slightly disappointed that Michael yeah, disagreed with him. Um, so, he went and had a talk with, his, uh, uh, with another friend of his, uh, Satana. And he explained his plan to Satanael, and Satanael was like, "Oh yes, this sounds like an excellent idea. We should try to, uh, yeah, try to remove this so-called silence, and the heaven will be better." So, but yeah, the so-called silence was a very big seal, very big barrier. So it was not very easy to to break or to remove. And also, there was Michael who was disagreeing with them, uh, who would, yeah, put his power. Uh, oppose his power to theirs. So this for alone couldn't do it, but together he thought, well, maybe we can do it, maybe not. But yeah, we should try to get as much help as we can to have as big a chance of success as possible. So he started to explain his plan to the other angels, how he wanted to elevate them and bring them to the higher heavens. But to do so, um, he would need their help. So they should give him their light and their power, so he would have the strength to remove the seal, so they could all move on. And well, some of the angels were just happy where they were, so they were like, well, you do what you want. And others were thinking like, no, I think Michael is right, we should not mess with things. And others were like, yeah, it sounds like a great plan, and here, have my light, and go for it. <laughs> You're my champion. <laughs> you can do it, go and save us. <laughs> So again, like there started the division in the heavens. So ultimately, um, uh, uh, Michael uh, uh, sees Lucifer and Satan El coming, and uh, he's like, "Oh no, 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 no! I know what you're planning, and this is not going to happen. <laughs> it's not a good plan. I disagree. It's it's, it's not a good idea." So, no. <laughs> and Lucifer explains to him, like, listen, I've, I've traveled the heavens, I've studied the heavens, and there is, there is an order, there is a, a hierarchy to things, and the, the lighter things, the more powerful things, they belong in the higher heavens, and they lead and inspire the lower things. And I have so much power and I have so much light now, you should follow me instead of me following you. <laughs> Things are different now. I'm not the same Lucifer who I was. But Michael was like, no, 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 no. <laughs> uh, you may be right, but you, I feel you're wrong. <laughs> so he says, no, okay. And, but also he, could, he realized he did not have the strength um, uh, to stop Lucifer and Satanael with all this power of the other angels. So he, uh, yeah, they were marching on and the seal was slowly being removed. Um, so he went up into the higher heavens to ask more powerful beings so if they could help him. And he went to all kinds of different spirits and uh, the spirits who were guiding the, the impulses of the divine and they said like, well, no, we're not getting interfered. We just want the impulses of the absolute to go everywhere. This is our job, so we don't see the problem of what is going on. And we went to the spirits of, of wisdom, and they said, like, well, yes, but he's a higher being now, so his judgment is better than our judgment or your judgment. 
So no, we don't think we should uh, we should interfere. <laughs> and finally, he came to one of the highest layers of the heavens, on which there lived, a, yeah, a spirit called Arans. And Arans could see that what was going on was wrong. And um, they said that yes, in a way, nobody is, is wrong because they are just respecting the order and the system which is created by the divine. But what is happening now is not what is meant to happen. So we will change the order so that it won't, will not happen. So they moved their home, their part of the heavens, um, down to uh, block the progress of um, Lucifer and Satanael. And Lucifer and Satanael were yeah, busy tunneling their way up. They suddenly found that there was this great barrier in front of them. And yeah, they started to gather all their power and their light and uh, working and trying to get enough strength and power to, to get through it. And they realized uh, that they couldn't. Uh, so they stopped to think like, okay, this is strange, what is going on here? Um, and then the Arans revealed themselves and told them what they had done. And they told them, like, we have moved our heaven into this uh, lower part of the heavens. Uh, because, yeah, what you're doing is, uh, is incorrect. And um, here, Lucifer and Satanel had two very different reactions. So Lucifer looked at it and said like, hmm, okay, I've gathered a lot of power, a lot of light, but okay, I have to recognize they have more than I do. So the only solution is I have to gather even more power, even more light to overcome this, uh, this great barrier which has been placed here. Satana thought like, oh, these great beings are in, in, used to be in much higher heavens, they are much greater than I, and now because of what I have done, they have fallen, they have had to leave their home in the high heavens, and now they are forced to live here, because, because of what I did. Was it uh, Satana uh, that uh, moved down? Uh, no, the Arans moved down. Yes. Yes. Arangs? Arangs, yeah. That's a Comparable to, to seraphims. Ah, okay. Yes, mm -hmm. class of angel. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, and he felt like, okay, this is a bad thing I did. And he felt, okay, I've done something really bad. Uh, this was a mistake. I've upset the order of things. So I should. Yeah, stop trying to, to, to improve uh, things and, and force my own order upon it and I should just try to repair all this disharmony and mess I've created. And I should take an example from what these arms have did and to improve things on a lower level instead of just trying to storm into the higher worlds, I should go down where there is the disharmony and try to fix it. So I should behave like the arms did actually voluntarily also went down from the higher heavens into a lower reality to try to repair it. And when um, yeah, Lucifer and Satanael told their followers what had happened and that they could not break the seal of the occult silence and that actually the situation was now worse from the way it had been before because before the energy could flow freely from the divine, but now the whole cosmos of the Arans was in the way, and actually the impulses of the divine were more distorted and more cut, and everybody was losing light instead of gaining it. Um, the angels also reacted differently. So some said like, okay, we have to help Lucifer, because we need to have more power, more light, more strength, more knowledge, to break through this barrier which the Arans have created. Some agreed with Satana, though, who said that um, we have to yeah, repair things ourselves and go to lower worlds to bring our light there. And other 
Wives believed um, that since they were now separated from the divine, that they had to create their own system and their own guidance. So instead of trying to go all the way up there or trying to make it as it was, they should try to create a new order. And they are called the followers of Arima. So that is the legend. Um, the original version is a little bit more poetic. <laughs> by um, the spirits who I try to follow the, the will of Michael or the will of the Arans or who try to yeah, attune to, uh, to Lucifer, to Satan or to Ariman. Um, this is a nature which also exists in our universe. And uh, it's a rather deep nature. It's really a, a nature much more of the of the of the soul than of the incarnated consciousness. So in, in spirituality there is always many things you can do, many tools to improve yourself. Um, but these four uh, types of beings have very different strategical goals of what is spiritual growth, what is spiritual improvement. And um, these kind of divisions, they um, also exist um, in, in many orders. So if you look at uh, spiritual groups or um, groups of spirits or religions, gods and goddesses, uh, they often are more attuned also to one type of spiritual growth than other types of spiritual growth. And in a way they inspire us, all these cosmoses seek to, uh, to grow, to manifest themselves, and by manifesting themselves they can go in the process of transformation, because by being incarnated in a physical body you have a lot of opportunities to share knowledge, to work with things, to transform things, because you have life force available. And life force is like an um, accelerant for, your, uh, for the transformation process. So there's a little bit of competition between these different cosmoses for chances to, uh, to incarnate and also uh, in how to guide the world or guide the process of spiritual transformation on our planet and other planets as well. So the different cosmoses are created by the angels uh, that wanted to make their own way. Yes. So, yes. Okay. Yeah. so in a way the, um, our, uh, our seeds, our souls, um, were uh, forged in the, in the heavens but, um, or they're forged like either before or after the fall, but they're also, um, in a way, uh, you have a kind of a family line, a family history. And that family history can be like of you know, basically Michael and the Arans, or Lucifer and his followers, or Satan and his followers, or Arima and his followers. So it's like, like a tree? Yes. Its, uh, yeah. Yeah. So the four are like the four. Yeah, creators of yeah, all the spirits which now inhabit our universe. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay. Mm -hmm. Was it Michael? Yes. Lucifer? Yes. Satanians? Yes. And the fourth is? Ariman. Ariman. Yes. And the names are a little bit borrowed from here. Uh, Michael, this is literally he, or he who is as God. So Michael is also not just a literary name, but also a very um, in indicative name. Uh, it's in the in the books. It's often used to to more 
show a type of angel. So it is not just a single angel, but there are the angels who in a way have as purpose to be as much as the creator as possible. This is their path. This is their goal. Um, to in a way imitate the highest. And uh, Lucifer uh, literally is light bringer. Um, so this is also yeah, a type of angel who feel that okay, there should be more knowledge, more development, more light, more movement, more. So they're often very uh, good at moving things along or stimulating uh, these things. Uh, Satan is literally impure. So he has basically a good nature, but there are some faults in him, some things wrong, some pollution, some sin, some yeah, thwarted things which make him dysfunctional. And Ariman is actually a little bit from the um, Zoroastrian uh, tradition, where um, they first had the juxtaposition of light and darkness and they said like okay there is, is fire which is a transformative force an evolutionary force which tries to to change our spirit and through the fire we are uh, we can use our life energy to transform to grow to turn into other beings but there are also powers which hold back this transformation which stop us from growing, which stop us from thinking, from realizing things. And um, this power, which it was in a way keeping us uh, from, from moving, uh, they called Arima. Is he, is he known as, a, as an archangel? Or? Uh, no, it, it, it's more from, from a pre-Christian religion. Yeah. Okay. So the Zoroastrians were actually uh, pretty much the first Austrian? Zoroastrian. It's the first yes. monotheistic religion. It's from uh, from Persia, uh -huh. and basically the religion travels from Persia, uh, well, to India and to Egypt, and of course in Egypt, later you had the uh, um, belief in, you know, I forget his name, uh, Akhenaton. Um, um, who, uh, so there was the pharaoh Akhenaton who also believed that instead of like many gods there was a single creator god, Aton and he started also a monotheistic religion there and well that didn't last very long but of course the Jewish people were also living in, uh, in Egypt and they kind of like, liked the idea of there being a single creator god so they picked up this idea and well, from the Jewish people later came uh, yeah, Christ and he uh, well, took this, uh, this idea of the single creator God and out of that of course came later Islam but basically the idea um, of the uh, yeah, of, yeah, basically light and darkness uh, is basically a Zoroastrian idea this is the root of, uh, of actually both the Semitic religions and Indian religions probably but it's quite long ago, so it's hard to trace back, especially with the Indian religions. But for the Semitic religions, it's quite clear yeah. how it went. So, yeah, it was before they conceived of angels and other heavens <laughs> that already the name Ariman mm -hmm. was existing as the opposite, the god of light, they called Ahura Mazda. And Ahura is freedom and I think Mazda is something like light of freedom or liberating fire or something like this. So, and yeah, our world is thus a mix between all these different impulses and the same with societies and religions and we will strive towards different goals and I will go a little bit more into detail for each of these four uh, groups and um, then we can go on a little trance journey and the trance journey we can um, try to enter or make contact with this cosmos and I will also invite some of the spirits of these cosmoses uh, 
to our world. Um, these cosmoses can also be divided in, uh, yeah, in light and dark. So um, it is not so much so that like the divine cosmos is only light and warm and cozy and snuggly, and <laughs> that Alemanic <laughs> cosmos is <laughs> only dark, evil dictatorships, uh, because light impulses and dark impulses exist in, in both uh, cosmoses. Um, but for safety's sake, I will only guide the journeys into the light cosmoses, uh, unless people are very interested in also investigating the dark cosmoses. Well, I'm done with that. <laughs> you don't feel a need anymore. <laughs> You're doing these things for you, t for yourself too. I just with those people. Yes, this is just to introduce you. I, but I did. Yes. Okay. It, it's mainly for me. It it was kind of um, curiosity because I um, I've been meeting spirits for well, quite a while, and yeah, I noticed yeah very different spirits have different ideas and different associations and different groups were working together. So I started to uh, yeah, to find out a little bit how uh, what was going and how they were working together and what are differences on both like a tactical level, like what techniques are there for spiritual development, but also what goals are there for spiritual development. And actually this story I only found a little bit later and <laughs> if you think about it, three or four years ago, so if I would have found a story for sooner, it would have saved me a lot of trouble. <laughs> it, was, it was also nice that, yeah, like the system you find out is like in a way also affirmed mm -hmm. that, gosh, there are other people who actually have similar ideas about it or had similar uh, experiences with it. And, yeah. I haven't personally shook, shaken hands with Ariman or Satan or Lucifer, but <laughs> it's, a, it's a good indication of, uh, of the structure. <laughs> and, and, and what are you doing for yourself at a time? In the spiritual ways? Uh, well, well, sorry, I'm just just yes, um, yes, um, yes. Um, um, uh, nosy. Yes. <laughs> um, what I've been most involved with is trying to get humans and nature spirits to more or less live in harmony and peace. <laughs> Keep humans from <laughs> using their, their power. <laughs> okay. And in general I can say it's gone terribly wrong. But <laughs> so, I've been very successful. <laughs> but I, I, I do score minor successes. Yeah, it's, it's so a you made your trips and you're working now. <laughs> so, but we yes. just think. <laughs> so I, I, you, you can you can look at me like a little bit like a like an energetic architect or gardener or trash collector or whatever. <laughs> so, <laughs> <laughs> things are messed up. And <laughs> okay. I try to correct things. So a little bit like like oil in a machine. Okay. So I will start them from the bottom or from the top. Maybe it's nice to end at the top. <laughs> okay. <laughs> So, in the Arimanic cosmos, the main motivation is in a way to um, not to look up, uh, but to look down. Um, so, for uh, a person with Arimanic tendencies, um, they always um, have a, a natural um, sense of status, of position, of bureaucracy. Um, so 
this can be something like a noblesse oblige, I have a certain power and therefore I have a certain responsibility. And uh, the power is both a blessing and a curse. So the, if you have more intelligence, more insight, more money, more whatever, then you have to take care of it and you have to use it in as good a way as possible. Um, so it gives you an amount of freedom, but yeah, it also gives you responsibilities. And uh, your responsibilities are not towards those who have more, but towards those who have less. So if you're a millionaire, you don't have to take care of poor billionaires who are <laughs> <laughs> don't know what to do anymore. <laughs> but yes, if you decide, okay, so there's people who are just starting their business or who are struggling, then this would be um, your domain. And in a way, their, uh, their method of, of learning, of transformation, is in a way by identifying with the absent God, with the absent divinity. So for uh, the person who has a very aromatic nature, uh, they often have no um, no experience, no direct experience with, uh, with the divine, with higher worlds. So they often like the idea that there is some divine overlord or landlord or whatever um, in existence, but they have no idea what he or she or it uh, would be like. And they feel it is un it is impossible for them to realize it. They are like, okay, I'm here in this world, this is a material world, God is not here, I have looked under every rock, behind every tree, I don't see God. So there is yeah, no realizable God, there is no knowable God, I cannot experience uh, the divine. But because of the lack of the divine, and still the hunger of the divine, they feel the need in a way to uh, to create the divine themselves. So they're like, okay, if there is no God to take care of things, then I have to do it in his stead. So I have to uh, act like God would act. I have to take care of the world, of the people, of the land, of the city, and make sure there are good conditions for everything to grow and to develop and to uh, get into uh, a better state of, uh, of being. Uh, and by, in a way, identifying with the, the role of God um, and all the burdens which, in a way, God has to take care of, um, they also grow closer to God. Um, because, karmically, if you, can, uh, if you develop the talent to use a power well, um, then that power will yeah, be granted to you in a, in a next life. Because you have shown that you are responsible, you can take care of it, you don't disturb things. And the, gr the greater skill you develop in using a power, the greater power you will be entrusted with in your next life. So the persons on the Arimanic level of development identify very strongly with their talents and with their position. They often feel like, okay, I am the one who takes care of this land, of this province, of this family, of this temple. And um, in, usually in the next generation or in the next incarnation, they are given an even larger group or uh, thing to take care of. So they typically evolve from like being a human into uh, being a guide, uh, so they can take care of several humans and into greater forms of guides who take care of like small villages, towns, provinces, countries, people and ultimately planets, solar systems and uh, they move up uh, all the way into, yeah, um, into divinities themselves. But it's a little bit of a uh, tricky process often um, because identification with power and also focus downward because they are not usually very interested in, in gaining a lot more power but just in using what power they have and it's very uh, that's a very big risk to become over identified because with lower vibrations and smaller things because this is where all your attention is going 
So in management, this is typically the danger of micromanagement. A person who feels overly responsible, cannot delegate, cannot let go of anything, and they end up doing everything themselves because everything has to be perfect in just the right way. And <laughs> they are better than anybody and they only have the complete vision. So, yeah, so this is often the trap in, in spiritual development for people from this cosmos. But for me, it's n n no need to, to, to follow this way. No, but it's nice to know that like, people can be from different cosmoses, just to understand what their experience is, or what their purpose is, or how they look at it. And hopefully after we've described all four cosmoses, you will find one which you feel like, oh, that's a little bit like me. <laughs> so, um, the aromatic cosmos is in a way, um, for the person involved in it, often a little bit of a, of a difficult place. So they often experience um, the cosmos as, as difficult or dark or because they feel a lot of responsibility, they don't feel a lot of help because there is nothing greater or higher than that. Um, but they often have a very strong sense of, uh, of duty or of mission, like I am given this power or knowledge or people look up to me or have this position for a reason. But often their, uh, their reason for existing or for being is very much identified with that, uh, with that position. And um, one of the biggest dramas or spiritual crises is uh, which can happen to a person from Aramana Cosmos is if they lose that power or lose that position. So if their power de depends on their physical strength or their intelligence or their eloquence or charisma or their beauty and they lose that, or yeah, they are like, who am I? What is the purpose in life? What am I doing in life? And they get completely lost because they always think of themselves within a system or within a role. So they're often very structured, also uh, mentally and in their consciousness. Um, one of the, the, the physical examples um, of uh, the Arimana cosmos in action is, uh, uh, is fascism. Uh, fascism uh, is basically uh, also a meritocratic system, which basically see, says some are better, and because they are better, uh, they should lead. And this is a very logical system, this is a very rational system, this is also a very stratified system between better people, less good people and creating uh, a hierarchy. Um, and it can work quite well, but also the problem is that when persons are very identified with their position, um, that they feel uh, threatened like, oh, somebody else will take my job as head of the company or minister of such and so. And then they yeah, lose their focus on the people they're trying to help, and who they're in a way serving. And then their power gets used in different way. And they get lost in different cosmos because then it goes into yeah, competition and other things. Um, so a good government or... Uh, should be yeah in the light side of Arimanic cosmos. This is a, a very natural position for uh, for government. Um, I'll say just a few words about the dark side of Arimanic position, um, because dark side of Arimanic position is more that they see themselves as um, jailkeepers. So uh, they say. Uh, they look at it and they say like, okay, everybody who was not good enough to be in the heavens has been cast out and they live in our universe and um, we must not allow the heavens to become polluted or to become corrupted. So everybody who is not good enough has to stay here. And they are like the, the guards who keep
keep everybody who's not smart enough, not good enough, not strong enough according to their standards, they keep them from reaching higher levels of awareness or higher spiritual consciousness or uh, because yeah they feel it should be pure and sterile and only those worthy are allowed to have it. So this is also very much the um, dichotomy between like acting out of mercy and acting out of justice, which is also a very strong division within um, the life cosmos. Okay, so shall we try to make a trip there or are there more questions? Yeah. No questions? <coughs> I think I just, I just, I just, I just,